So this is me with my resting bitch face. It has been many months ago since I have been swept off my feet both gastronomically or romantically. What happened, you might ask? Let's just put it this way. Multiple dates at numerous less than yawn churning places has quickly led to the fossilization of my heart. I was all ready to just crawl into my hole and accept my fate until my soul cried. God forbid, no! Okay, babe, we've got this. This restaurant was an open invitation by one of you lovely people. For reasons untold and motives unknown, I am late. Yep, so late that he is no longer here. Maybe this is fate. Perhaps this is how it should be. Cause destiny always has its own plan. Well, I'm here now. I'm finally ready to be amazed by your splendor. But who knows? I believe that this happened at just the right time. When I am just disappointed enough, but not yet jaded, thus I was able to better appreciate the pure beauty and honest magnificence of this gem cache. Come for the free meal, they say. You don't have to pay a single cent, you just have to show up. Whenever I hear such words preluding an invitation, I know clear well that these are the exact ones that I will turn down. I am not rich, but I am not poor either. I am, however, comfortable enough to not have to sell my precious time and integrity for a miserly meal. This is not something that many will understand, especially not those with a scarcity mindset. For we each live in different realities and are exposed only to our versions of truth. Meeting new people is like discovering new restaurants. Sometimes you chance upon them, other times you actually do a great deal of research before you decide to invest any effort in them. One thing I've learned, not all places with negative reviews are bad, but not all Michelin star restaurants are worth trying either. The same theory applies for people as well. Whether a restaurant or a person gets rave reviews depends on a melange of factors. In a restaurant, some prioritize the taste of the food over ambience, while others prefer service over value for money. One person might be after good looks, while another might chase intelligence or riches. When we finally find that star who satisfies our criteria in relative harmony, that is whom we call the one. How often do we get this fortunate? Not at all, hardly. But yet, it is also this rarity that makes the one precious, treasured, and cherished. Shakam for midi asapo. Beauty comes differently for all of us. Baba or rum might have first been made in France, but it has definite links to Eastern Europe. The origins of Baba or rum come from the Baka, a yeast cake that can still be found in Poland and Ukraine. So how did this Polish cake made it to France and even got itself soaked in rum? It all started with an exiled king. After a brief reign, Stanislaus I of Poland fled to Alsace in 1709. He swiftly swiped the throne from King Augustus II, but quietly disappeared when Augustus returned to reclaim the throne. And while in exile, he had the good sense to marry his daughter Marie off to Louis XV of France. And apparently a good idea, he bought the original version of the Baka with him. 
One day, Stanislas was dismayed to find the baka he had been looking forward to eating had become too dry. A patissier of his cleverly suggested to soak it in Malaga wine before eating, which turned out to be a delectable pairing. With this, the patissier made a very positive impression on the family. Tohe became a very important figure in the family. It wasn't until 1835 that legend has it, one of Stohe's descendants switched out the Malaga wine for rum, and the Baba O'Ram was officially born.